Before you rise the mighty walls of Brighthus. But you're not the only new arrival. A massive skeleton army is sieging the city! The melding of tabletop RPG and Borderlands in Tiny Tina's Wonderland almost feels like a Pimp My Ride meme. You like RPGs in your RPG-based looter shooters? Because at its core, Borderlands has always been heavily influenced by role-playing games, both the tabletop and video game varieties. The visible damage counters as you unleash a cliff or 300 into your enemies is a direct nod to the damage counters in games like Final Fantasy. And the Gearbox main offices in Texas have an entire room set aside with what might be the greatest tabletop RPG setup I've ever seen. Giving Tiny Tina her own DLC, which by the way is standalone as of last November, as well as a spin-off game with Wonderlands feels like the perfect encapsulation of the DNA of Borderlands as a whole. And then they went and added spells and melee attacks. You're stuck on this side. What do you do? I think it's obvious. We seduce the drawbridge. Greetings, inanimate object. Would you like to engage in physical congress? Yeah, I'm not even gonna make you roll for that. The drawbridge, it takes your flavor, baby. Works every time. The first big difference between this and your ordinary, non-imaginary Borderlands campaign is the addition of spells to your arsenal. In some ways, they replace grenades from the mainline series, but they have such a distinct look and feel that they easily differentiate themselves from the grenades you're used to chucking at Psychos. For one, they have a cooldown period rather than a set inventory, so you can cast spells to your heart's content and never need to fill up on ammo like you do with grenades. You just need to let your spells Recharge. There are weapons and items that can cut down on the cooldown time, and you can link moves and spells together and create all sorts of chaos. I really, I mean really like the way spells add to combat. While there aren't healing spells per se, there are dark magic spells you can cast that feed your hurting and hungry fate maker with hit points while doling out damage to whatever fanciful baddie happens to be on the receiving end of your arcana. I was equipped on my playthrough with a meteor spell that looked as good as the damage it dealt. A portal opened above the head of the enemy I was targeting from which a torrent of flaming meteors rained down their damage. This would happen while I was also unloading clip after clip into them. It just, it, it just felt awesome is what I'm saying. But it doesn't just stop with the spells either. Melee attacks in Wonderlands are more important than ever before. In fact, they're no longer last ditch efforts to cause some up close damage like they tend to be in most first person shooters. Come, friends, to battle and glory! Melee weapons use the same RNG modular system as the guns, so that means you get different buffs and bonuses depending on the rarity of the melee weapon you find. With the exception of the two-handed swords, which have extended reach, triggering a melee attack glides you towards an enemy. In other words, you can attack them before they're in range to attack you. You can therefore approach a group of enemies and chain your attacks together, gliding with deadly precision between them. Depending on your melee weapon boosts, this could lead to bonus effects like decreased spell cooldown. It puts the badass in bunkers of badass. I feel magical! I hope you made your peace. None of the attacks felt like they overshadowed the others, although guns are still the main draw for Borderlands. Instead, they work together to make combat feel extremely fast and tight. There's no clunkiness, or at least not in the loadout I was given to use. I should point out, I was given something of an OP character to play, something creative director Matt Cox told me was done in the interest of letting me try out more types of attacks. In the final version, the mission I played is a little too early to have the kind of level of weapons I was given. That being said, I kind of look forward to building to the level of fluidity I experienced during my preview. When encountering a big old group of enemies, I felt a sense of excitement rather than the apprehension I sometimes felt in previous Borderlands games where I was worried my collection of weapons wasn't going to cut it. I wish I'd gotten the chance to play more because there was so much to see and do in just the one level I played through during my brief time with Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. The combat felt great and I'm looking forward to the final game where I can mix and match guns and spells and melee weapons and open chest after tasty chest. My biggest takeaway from the demo is Tiny Tina's Wonderlands feels so very right in so many ways and I'm very excited for the final game and all of its ridiculous fantasy tropes, seemingly endless spell and gun combinations and of course opportunities for loot. Clatters to the 
cobblestones, you realize you've done it. The undead horde has been defeated! For more on Tiny <laughs> Tina's Wonderland, stay tuned for more exclusive IGN First coverage all February long. Thank <laughs> you.